Hello and welcome to Pat's Facebook Live at lunchtime. We, today we are talking adoption um, today about the adoption process and why it has a reputation for being a little difficult. Um, as always, you can ask us some questions on, on, in the comments box below and we will do our best to answer those today, live or afterwards privately. I'm Emma Owen and I'm joined today by senior social worker Emma Johnson. Um, and we're going to talk about the adoption process. Mm -hmm. So Emma, why has, is there this perception that the adoption process is so hard? I think in the past it has been a long process and that reputation remains. Uh, people use the words intense and intrusive and that people go over every area of your life. I think we'd prefer to use words like thorough and rigorous and really careful. And we are unashamedly taking great care in both assessing and preparing people to become parents. Because of course it's all about the children that will be placed. We take great care of adopters, but the reason they're coming to us is to become parents to children. And those children will mostly have had very difficult experiences in their birth families. They may have experienced trauma and losses and they need parents who are really well able and equipped to do that. So the assessment process is twofold. It is about us getting to know you and finding out all about you as people and your families and your support network, the resources that you have to offer and the kind of parents that you will be. But it's also about us preparing you to meet the needs of those children. There are uh, lots of elements that we need to cover. So we do in uh, a a good amount of detail, uh, look at your own family histories, the way that you were parented, um, the things that you would do the same, the things that you would do differently. Now, for some people, that's a really quite straightforward process. They had quite happy childhoods, uh, are in good relationships with their parents and haven't had any particular difficulties or losses of their own. And that process can feel quite easy to talk about. For other people, they will have had all sorts of life experiences of their own and may not feel so comfortable talking about those things. Mm -hmm. And so we're really careful. We take our time. There isn't a rush or a hurry. Um, it's about having time to think and reflect through those things. Um, and some people will find that easier than others. I think one of the other perceptions that people have is that you're being judged. So we would use the word assessment, um, which is about finding out and exploring and coming to um, answers together of, of how we want to present your life story um, in order to, for you to become approved adopters. Uh, we would avoid the word judgment. We're not judgmental. We're not making value judgments about those uh, elements of your life that perhaps have been more difficult as an applicant. Um, we appreciate that if you are talking about difficult things and that's not something you're used to doing, um, and perhaps we're asking things that you've never thought about before, you've never been asked by anybody before to think about what the way your parents disciplined you, for example, and whether you would do the same or would be different yourself as a parent. That might feel very stretching, it might feel challenging, but we can assure anybody who applies to adopt that it will be done in a very thoughtful, caring and non-judgmental way. Um, I think as well, it's it, the whole purpose is, is about becoming a parent. Uh, we assess and approve people to adopt, but it doesn't stop there. We go on and support you through finding your child, through those early days of becoming a family. And so it's important that we get to know you mm -hmm. so that we can do that well. We know what you find supportive and helpful, the words and the things that you are going to need later down the line that will help you when you are... Um, getting used to family life. So that's a, another really important part of it. So yes, I I, th I think that it's uh, not surprising that people approach uh, the process with a little bit of trepidation. Your social worker will understand that um, and will guide you through that process in a really sympathetic way. Uh, one more thing I would say is that Anybody who applies to adopt is completely invested in that process. They do it because they want to become a parent and what an amazing thing, um, but may have experienced uh, loss through trying to have children naturally, for example, and that may have been a very long and difficult process for them already. Um, and when you're 
so excited and keen and invested in wanting to do something. I think you want everything in you wants that to work and to, and to happen and to happen quickly. Um, and so sometimes it will feel like we're just bringing the, the measure to that and the, uh, the, the, the pace and, and making it a really, really careful and uh, measured process. So it's very thorough for yeah. good reasons. Yeah. Um, so what are the main elements that you're going into that could uh, make it more, uh, more complicated than, than other... Um, so the assessment process is divided into to two sections. The first stage, and we will talk more about this um, in the next Facebook Live session, uh, but two stages. So the first section of a couple of months, stage one, is lots of background checks, references, a medical check, a DBS, which is a criminal record history check. Uh, references from friends, from family, from employers. So that takes some time. Now we aim to do that within a two month period and we're really efficient at doing that. But of course there can be things that, that hold that up. Um, typically it can be um, uh, just getting an appointment with a GP and getting that medical done and getting that back. It can be references from friends or family not coming back quite when they should. Um, so there can be variables there. Mm. Um, the stage two process, the uh, actual assessment part of the process should take four months. Again, we're very good at packed at, at working to those timescales if we possibly can. But if people have had quite tricky experiences, we may need some longer time to explore those. Or if people are not finding it easy to talk about their childhoods and their lives and their relationships. Again, we're not going to rush that through. Um, it may be that we need to, to slow down a bit and have more time for reflection through that process. Uh, so, yeah, they, those are the variables, I think. And some other things that you, we need to take our time to look into are things like finances yeah, and yes, uh, big uh, changes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So we, um, we would recommend that people are as ready as they can be in their sort of personal lives, their finances, their jobs. So if you're about to move house or if you're hoping for a promotion or applying for new jobs, that's not the best time to start an adoption assessment and we would ask you those questions um, and recommend that you perhaps wait until those things are done. If finances for example are, are not entirely clear then that will take longer because we'll ask you to provide information for us and that we can verify bank statements, mortgage statements, that kind of thing. And also that you'll need to um, evidence for us that you have a reasonable amount of savings that will enable you to be able to take adoption leave. There would be no point for us, example, if somebody has lots of debts and no savings, saying that you could go through the assessment process now if you're then not going to be in a position to take adoption leave to be able to care for a child. Okay, so what tips um, can you give to people to help make that process as straightforward as possible? So as I've just been saying, those things, moving houses, jobs, finances, having those things in good order um, and being uh, as sure as you can be, as sure as anybody can be, that big changes aren't ahead because that may mean that we have to stop the process for a while. Other things that you can do, uh, you know, just be in, as invested in your own learning and development as possible. So there is a wealth of information on the internet and there are hundreds, probably thousands of books about adoption. So being really well informed and doing your own um, learning and preparation is important. The tip I would give on that is when you're researching online, I would recommend that people make care, uh, take care to make sure they're looking at UK-based websites. There are websites from all over the world, but particularly from the US, and the process and adoption is quite different in the US. Um, but I, I sometimes find it surprising that when people approach us to talk about adoption, they haven't done that already. Um, uh, the information is there that is there for the taking and we can provide book lists and we can point people in the right direction the other thing that is really important of course is people have uh, come to us to talk about adoption because they want to be parents it's so important that you have some experience of being with children so whether that's children in your family friends network or um, voluntary work with children it's really important because a large part of the assessment will be talking about children what child you are looking for um, will be based on your own experiences of being around children will be asking you to think about the things that you like about children the things that wind you up about children how you'll cope when children are 
pushing your buttons as a parent, it's really difficult to talk about those things if you haven't been around children. So top tip is to spend as much time with children as you possibly can. I facetiously say beg, borrow and steal children. I don't obviously actually mean that, but I mean if you have friends and family who will let you have children visit your home, babysit, maybe even stay overnight, get involved in hands-on care of children, then great. If you don't, and not everybody does, have those um, age children in their network, then voluntary work is a really good way of doing that. And we can, again, give you lots of ideas about where you could get that sort of experience. Okay. Um, so have we had any questions while we have been talking so far? Um, there's one here. What, what do people feedback as the hardest part of the process? Um, that's an interesting question because I think in each stage people think they're in the most difficult bit, that, that there's lots to do, it's busy and there's lots of questions to be answered. Um, in reality, of course, it sounds like a really simple answer, but being a parent, <laughs> actually, it's the, end, it's the end stage. Well, we're there for that. We don't sort of uh, get you to the point of becoming parents and then disappear off. We're involved with families for six months a year, sometimes more, um, and sometimes that's very smooth um, um, and sometimes... The, the arrival and the placement of a child in the early days are, are harder and they need more support. Um, I think people who find the assessment part of the process tricky are those people who aren't used to talking about themselves and mm. find that quite difficult. So we would encourage you just to trust us that you're, we're asking the questions for the right reasons and that the, the more open you can be, uh, the more reflective you can be, the more willing you can be to think about your own experiences and relate them to the parent you're hoping to become and the needs of the children that you're wanting to care for, uh, the easier you will find the process. When people can apply to adopt with us at PACT, it's very often because they know somebody who adopted with us previously and was able to say, it's it's not what you think it's going to be talk to these people and they'll really be able to guide and help you through this process and that positive recommendation from our own adopters is really important to us because it helps us to know that we're we're on the right track in the way that we're that we're supporting and preparing our adopters thank you so hopefully there we've um given you some reassurance that the adoption process isn't as intrusive and um, intense as perhaps you might believe um, it is thorough but for good reasons um, if you have any questions any further questions about this particular topic please do comment below and we will respond to every everybody privately so that's the end of our new shorter live at lunchtime sessions we're going to be here on the first friday of every month at one one o'clock sorry, the last Friday, <laughs> not the first, the last Friday of every month at one o'clock, please join us and we're going to be tackling some of the in-depth issues that you've asked us about in the past. Um, so we look forward to joining you next time. In the meantime, if you'd like to find out more, please do visit our website at pactcharity.org. Um, there you'll find a guide to adoption. If this is all new to you and you want to find out exactly what's involved about adopting, please download that guide. Um, you can call our inquiries team on 0300 456, uh, sorry, 456 4800 um, and you can book onto one of our free information events that we hold um, every month in Sussex, in Berkshire and in London. So we look forward to joining you again next time. Um, thanks for joining us. <laughs>